No matter how well prepared you are, buying a property is always a bit of a gamble. But the more research you do, the more you stack the odds in your favour. So have the buyers on today's show made the right moves? Here's what they bought. In Burton-on-Trent, I'm jumping for joy in a three-bed terrace. Woohoo! There we are, into a bedroom. And what is Jackie in Tunbridge Wells to see? It's a little bit of an unusual one, because I'm not here to see a house, nor a flat. And Martin visits a surprisingly spaced out house in Grimsby. And how much space in general have we got with this property? All these properties have been sold at auction and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. Yes, we are. We're in Burton-on-Trent in Staffordshire, a town known for its brewing of beer. Regular fermentation was started by the monks at Burton Abbey as early as the 11th century. So, a good place to buy a beer, but is it a good place to buy a property? The property I'm here to see is just under a mile from Burton-on-Trent train station by a busy road and also the A38 is just up there. So it's not the quietest of spots, but it is pretty handy for journeys. Here's our house. It's a three-bed mid-terrace, which came with a guide price of £97,500. Let's go look. This property has a flying freehold, which means the bedrooms go over a passageway used by both you and your neighbours, so effectively you both own it. And straight ahead, we've got stairs going up, but let's start with the sitting room. I love the proportions here and the sense of space you get, particularly with that big, bright bay window is just terrific. Through to a second sitting room, which is smaller, not only that, it's not quite square. This wall is at a bit of an angle, so it tapers along. Now the window, interestingly, I mean, it looks pretty new and in good condition, but it's not exactly double glazing. What you have is a single pane and then another single pane which you shut over it. The other thing about this room is that to get through it, you have to walk diagonally across it, which is not ideal when it comes to, well, where do you put your furniture? If you wanted a dining room table in here, you'd have to squeeze over here or here and walk around it. Maybe you need to think about configuration and layout. Through to the kitchen, which is retro in feel, pretty tired, but they do say, if you wait long enough, everything comes back into fashion. Now, as much of a fan as I am of open plan living, for me, this works so well. You have doors to close to keep your kitchen smells in and it suits the house. And then you come to your shower room stroke toilet area, which isn't ideal having to walk through this very long house to get to what I hope isn't the only toilet in the whole house. It's really tired. The layout doesn't work. You have your shower, a wall, then you have to walk round to get to the toilet. It needs to change. You could do so much better. An odd configuration downstairs. Will upstairs be a more convenient layout? upstairs and have not shrunk it's actually quite far down but you could get some exercise in by going woohoo there we are into a bedroom now looking back what you have is a lovely little feature which is a skylight a great way of bringing in some natural light to quite a dark hall into a double bedroom which is a good size but the obvious point here and it's not a good one is this clearly you have a damp problem here the wallpaper is just peeling away it really is you know what i'm going to say get it looked at oh you can't say there's not plenty of scope for exercise in this house along quite a dark corridor and next up i come to a bedroom which you could just about get a double bed into. You've got a cupboard area you could use as a wardrobe. Just now, it houses an old-fashioned hot water tank, but you would want to get a combi boiler, which is far more practical, and you wouldn't want it in here. I'm not a fan of having your boiler in a bedroom. Put it downstairs. Good news, you do have a toilet upstairs, so you don't have to trek all the way downstairs in the middle of the night. But I would like to see a shower or even better, a bath 
up here? Could you borrow some room from either side? Well, neither of these bedrooms, this is the third bedroom here, are particularly big, but you could think about it and the plumbing's in place. What's not in place is central heating. There's none throughout the house, so that's a bit of a cost because you would want to put that in for a modern buyer. Now, as I've been walking around and I see that you have three bedrooms here, you also have the sitting room downstairs at the front of the house, which is quite self-contained, could make a fourth bedroom. The reason I'm thinking along these lines is that half a mile away, you have a big hospital. So this is a strong area for a rental market. You could think about renting individual rooms out to maximize your rental income. It's a thought. If you were going down the HMO, House of Multiple Occupancy route, you would need to make sure that lots of rules and regulations were adhered to, but it's definitely a strong option. Although this property needs work to fix the odd layout and bring it up to date, it's certainly big enough to give you a number of options going forward. What will we find outside? Ah, now you could be forgiven for thinking you had quite a small garden because this is in the way and it's a lovely sweet greenhouse but I'd like to see the length of this beautiful garden so you might think about taking that down. Now something else is catching my eye and it's not the shed as nice as it is it would make a lovely little den for the kids or somewhere to put all your gardening tools but it's this at the very bottom of the garden you have a gate and the curb's already been lowered so you could think about having off-street parking and you've got a gorgeous grassy area which would be great to play five-a-sides or maybe a game of rounders. We asked along an estate agent from the auction house who sold the property for his opinion. We're overlooking a very pleasant little green here, kind of didn't, didn't expect it myself. And to have the off-road parking attached with the property, very beneficial and, and a great selling point. So how much does he think it might cost to get this property best primed for the market? I would anticipate costs in the region of 20 to 25,000 pounds. And once any work has been completed, how much would he estimate it could get on the sales and rental markets? A standard family home, um, in this kind of location, you're probably looking at a price around 160,000 pounds. When renovated, I would anticipate a rental income around 700 pounds per calendar month. And if they were to attempt to turn it into an HMO? If you are converting into a multi-let kind of property or a HMO uh, licensed property, those values could be 180 to 200,000 pounds. And if it were rented? You're probably talking around 90 pounds per room, per week, and that will include bills. This house does need a fair bit of work, but come on, you've come to expect that with a Homes Under the Hammer property. It's also got so much going for it. Inside there's plenty of space, and I love the period features. Outside, the garden has been so well loved. It's thoroughly charming. With the hospital close by, it's a great rental area. This could be a terrific investment. Let's find out who saw the opportunity when it went to auction. This lot was part of a remote auction with bids taking place online. Yes, we are. Sam and Tricia, along with nine-week-old Samuel Jr., also known as SJ, bought the property for £138,500. Both are no strangers to Hammer nor property development. Tricia, Sam, great to see you again. And you. Great to see you. Also, thank you so much for bringing baby SJ, who's how old now? Nine weeks. Sam Jr. is gorgeous. So tell me about what you've been up to and what this is for. Uh, adding a lot of value, the, still the same strategy of trying to buy a property, retain it. So adding effectively 25% if possible to then keep hold of it and then build a portfolio at the same time. So it's the HMO, the House of Multiple Occupancy, that's your model that works really well for you. I was thinking you've got a hospital half a mile from here. Yeah. Yeah. I think you were thinking that too. Yeah. So what's the plan for this house? Uh, this will be five studios, so like, want to do self-contained apartments, um, so kitchenettes, en suites, 
for it to be classed as a HMO, there still needs to be some sort of shared facility. So we're just waiting, working with the architect at the minute to see what we can come back with to see whether it'll be a communal kitchen or a communal bathroom, but something along those lines. But we're trying to keep it so it's a lot of all um, separate living nowadays. Yeah, and there's three bedrooms upstairs, but a self-contained sitting room at the front, which we're standing in. And I thought you might make a fourth out of that, but five. I'm interested to know what's the layout going to be. I want to do a single story extension out the rear under permitted development. Alternatively, there may be a possibility of doing a dormer, uh, but then it'll be a case of jiggery pokery with the stairs. So, whatever comes back easiest to do and cheapest to do to get the five. Will you be cramming them in? No. No, because you're actually going to make this place bigger. With studios, they have to be bigger to be able to house a kitchenette facility in there, which will have all the things that they need, like their oven and their hob station, um, but they need to be bigger. So even with that in mind, with the little kitchenette in there, they will have very nice big rooms with all, also their own private bathrooms. Now, if you're going for five plus, you'll have to be granted a license and you're well aware of all the rules and regulations. Give me an example of what you have to do lots of different things so that you've got different routes of fire yeah. escape so you can't just put rooms in certain areas you have to have a clear route of escape that's not through a room that's going to potentially be the cause of a fire um windows windows have to be escape yeah. windows lighting um, lighting emergency lighting control panels for a big Alarm fire alarm. with sounders. Yeah. Fire alarm systems. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, the list is endless. How long is this going to take you? I would say give a nice six months because not only do we get it to a really super high standard, which obviously does take a bit longer, because um, we have interior designers and everything on these now to make them all unique pieces, we get it fully furnished. So it's a bit like a hotel. You know, the tenants <laughs> just need to bring their themselves and their clothes. That's it. So to have it fully ready and looking fabulous, I give us six months because again we just need to understand are we doing an extension and a dormer or are we doing both so that's allowing a bit of extra time for that as well. So what's your budget here? So it'll be about 110,000 all in and that'll cover all the furnishings as well. The very best of luck to you both. I know this property is in very safe hands. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. See you soon. Trisha and Sam, what a winning duo. And how cute is baby SJ? They also have a winning formula when it comes to renovating properties and transforming them into HMOs. They're doing exactly that here. And I know this property is in safe hands. What really excites me though, is their plans for this place. It sounds like it's going to look like a lovely, unique boutique hotel. Will it? You can find out later in the show. Off to Kent now and Tunbridge Wells, or to give it its correct title, Royal Tunbridge Wells, a place that became a fashionable resort town following visits from Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. But will today's auction lot get Jackie's approval? Well, from here, you can get into London's Waterloo Station in less than an hour, making it a very attractive location if you're a commuter. The property I'm here to see is bang in the middle of this well-established housing estate. It had an auction guide price of £295,000, but this is a little bit of an unusual one, because I'm not here to see a house, nor a flat, but rows and rows of these. Garages. So, how many garages do you think you get with this lot? You were counting, weren't you? Well, there's exactly 40 to be precise. Now, you can imagine if you wanted that space maybe to lock away your car, you wanted to tinker with that motorbike, or, like me, always looking for space for my upcycling projects, then this could be perfect. That means the owner of this site could potentially have 40 garage renters. That could earn a pretty penny for your annual income. But if you read the information in the auction catalogue about this site, it reveals some very interesting options. Why don't you tell me? Cause I'm hanging on a hook. So let me give you a bit of background. Just over three years ago, someone had planning permission granted by the local authority to be able to knock down all of these garages and build houses. Four houses to be precise two three-bedroom semi-detached houses and two one-bed semi-detached bungalows. The problem is that time has now lapsed. 
So whoever gets this plot of land will need to apply for planning permission once again. But if the local authority granted it the first time, probably they'll do so again. So this could be a very attractive proposition indeed. Yes, that's a potential game changer for this site that was guided at £295,000 plus. Nothing, of course, is guaranteed when it comes to planning, but past approval does stack the odds in your favour. And with an increasing need for housing, well, there's certainly cause for optimism. And there are other reasons why this makes a good proposition as a building plot. Now, when you're thinking of building houses on an empty plot of land, you've got to think about the logistics. How do I get access for my workforce with their vans, but also for my materials, my supplies coming in on trucks and lorries? Well, you've got it here. You've got all the access, you've got all the garages. So that's that box ticked. And then what about drainage? Because, matter of fact, you've got drainage running right through this plot. And then, of course, you've got to think about your utilities, your gas, your water, your electricity. Well, hello, we are smack bang in the middle of a housing estate. I do not think that's going to be a problem. So all in all, it's a great start for a developer. Right here is all I Well, I guess the only thing we need now is an indication of whether or not this will work as an investment. So time, I think, to hear from a local estate agent. It's a very unusual site uh, in terms of its garages at the moment. Uh, so in terms of uh, prospects, it could either be retained as garages, rent the garages out as a long-term investment, uh, or even looking at developing the site, uh, be it houses, bungalows or flats, all subject to planning. But being, again, a popular residential area, I'm sure there's uh, yeah, potential there. Undoubtedly potential, but the site was guided at £295,000 plus and build costs could be in the region of £400,000 or more. So is there likely to be much of a return here? In my view, the site is ideal for uh, building three bedroom houses, probably semi-detached houses. Uh, in the current market, for a semi-detached house, three bedrooms, uh, town style as well. Uh, I'd expect to sell in the region of £425,000 to £450,000. Well, as a crafty maker myself, I can see loads of workshop type uses for this plot. You'd have workshops, you could have storage and of course garages. And that in itself is a valuable commodity. But if big money's the name of the game, then the more lucrative option would be to build houses here. So this site has plenty going for it. Let's see who spotted the opportunity when it went under the hammer. This lot was part of a remote auction with bids taking place online, so we can't show you footage of the successful bidder on the day. But for £399,500, the successful bidders were Say and his business partner, Mark. And it was Say who met Jackie back at the garage lot to tell her more. Say what you want for me. It's nice to meet you, Say, and congratulations. Thank you. So what attracted you and your business partner, Mark, to this site, which contains garages? A lot of these four garages are sort of almost you know, falling apart, so we wanted to sort of make this uh, a better site and kind of add value to the community. And it's already had planning permission in the past for four dwellings. Um, so we've, uh, we've had a look at it to try and maximise the space on it and managed to squeeze five in there. And um, we've uh, put in for uh, sort of uh, the first stage of planning, so a, a meeting with the council to, to see whether they might accept that. Did you read the legal pack? Yeah, so my business partner and I, Mark, together, we'd made sure we knew what was in the legal pack prior to purchasing. Was there anything in the legal pack that you thought, when you read it, you thought, oh my gosh, what's this? Well, there was a, there's an overage there, which, um, which basically meant we had to pay a, a proportion of the uplift in value from uh, the planning permission we gained to the vendor that was selling it. But um, to be honest, it didn't really phase us too much because, again, it, wasn't, it, was, a, it was a small value, um, but it was something that was a little bit unusual and not, not in every single um, plot that you look at in auction. 
Yet another reminder why you need to study that legal pack carefully. And though they do want to get five instead of four properties here, they're not radically changing the plans. Sticking to two one-bed bungalows and just upping the number of the three-bed townhouses from two to three. Each house will have front and rear gardens and, of course, plenty of parking. So tell me about your background. So uh, I, I, I used to work as a doctor and then uh, recently um, I've gone full-time into property um, and focusing on sort of building, building out and looking after my existing properties and, um, and sort of trying to scale up and purchase more uh, to, to grow my sort of existing portfolio. So from a doctor to a property developer, how did you make that leap? Well, I started off in a small way, you know, just sort of buying small, small places, doing them up, um, renting them out, and um, slowly but surely keep, keep on adding units and adding the rent roll. And then um, I've got to a stage now where there's enough sort of going on that I could utilize, uh, utilize the cash flows from those to, to sort of set up my team and, and get the whole thing working um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a big machine, hopefully, and to continue to keep buying more properties and, mm. uh, and grow in a sustainable, scalable way. Yeah. And so how many properties do you have at the moment? I have about 17 properties at the moment. Is this going to be your first new build? Correct, yeah. So this is actually my first ground-up new build that I'm doing, um, where I've got planning from the beginning and seen it all the way through to the end. Um, and, yeah, and, and the same with Mark as well. So yeah. it'll be an exciting time for both of us um, to do it together. Well, it does sound like this development is Say and Mark's next logical step in their property careers. They've steadily built up experience over a number of years and now feel ready to take the leap into the world of new builds. So who's going to be doing the work? Mark will be project managing the site mm -hmm. and um, we, we already have really good relationships with local contractors and local building firms. So um, we have the option of potentially a, a local builder coming in on a joint venture basis with us. And then wh what about sort of time scale? How long do you think this will take to complete? So our pre-application planning meeting is next Thursday. Um, so that from that date, um, once we have, assuming it's a positive response, we'll have a, an answer within about eight weeks for definite planning being accepted, uh, hopefully. And then following that, so as the, planning, uh, as the planning looks close to being approved, we'll then go ahead and line up our builders at the same time so that they can pretty much start in quick succession to the planning being approved. Once that's point starts, we reckon it will be about six to 12 months to, to get the, um, the three houses here built. Mm. Um, and then once these three houses are built here, we can either sell one off plan or potentially raise finance against them to then fund the rest of the build. Or if we, if we are able to secure funding from, from other, other types, so if we're able to get crowdfunding or whether we get second charge lending on the whole site as yeah. a whole, we'll then be able to um, build out the whole site. So we're looking at roughly 12 to 18 months um, in total. Yeah, and so what about budget? So our budget for all five properties to be built is 700,000. Um, so that includes the cost of uh, the, the actual physical build of the properties, but also some local landscaping to make sure that the, the, the whole site looks lovely once mm. it's done. Well, this is all very exciting and I wish you and Mark the very best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Say and Mark are taking on their biggest challenge yet. They plan to build five brand new houses, all to a high standard. All will have front and rear gardens and plenty of parking. But their first hurdle is that all-important planning permission. How will the pair get on with their first ever new build project together? And what will we find when we come back? Well, you can find out later in the show. Coming up, Martin's found a hole in the wall in Grimsby. Some kind of uh, sud partition wall. Somebody's actually already put a hole in it for you. You can see that would be very easy to take out. And we discover the fate of the Tunbridge Wells garages. Uh, so our plan with the site was to sell it as quickly as possible, if we could. Time to head back to Burton on Trent and this three bed terrace house, which was guided at £97,500. It wasn't in too bad a state, albeit a little vintage. 
If you wait long enough, everything comes back into fashion. Case in point, this very retro feeling drinks cabinet. But you have to know you're retro from it's time to go. And this kitchen, well, it really has seen better days. As well as an update, it was in need of a layout change and perhaps it could have been better suited as a house of multiple occupancy or HMO. Half a mile away, you have a big hospital. So this is a strong area for a rental market. You could think about renting individual rooms out to maximise your rental income. The lucky buyers were Sam and Trisha, along with baby Samuel Jr, who got the place for £138,500. They seemed to agree that the HMO route was the way to go. This will be five studios, so like, want to do self-contained apartments, um, so kitchenettes, en suites. For it to be classed as a HMO, there still needs to be some sort of shared facility, so we're just waiting, working with the architect at the minute to see what we can come back with, to see whether it'll be uh, a communal kitchen or a communal bathroom, but something along those lines. But we're trying to keep it so it's a lot of all um, separate living nowadays. Yeah. Now we're back seven months later to see how they got on. The house is now made up of five self-contained bedrooms, each with an ensuite. The downstairs layout has been completely transformed and a modern, open-plan communal living area has been created. There is also the addition of a new boiler and central heating throughout. Upstairs, there are three luxury boutique suites with a high-end finish. All with clever attention to detail. The original plan was to build into the loft space, but Sam and Trisha decided it wasn't worthwhile. Instead, they went for an extension to the back of the property alongside a new space for off-street parking. Not all tenants want to do gardening, so we go for the low maintenance thing, we, we grab it over, um, and then obviously, like you say, it's provided off-street parking, so it's a win-win. And we've done an extension as well, so the fact that there's an extension on there, which created the second room downstairs, which has got it's the kitchenette in there, but we've still got this huge space that can give valuable off-road parking that is really in demand in this area. Sam and Trisha have business partners, Lisa and Lester, providing funds for their various projects. But who else helped out along the way? So we've got a, a local build team who works solely for us. Uh, they, we've got so many projects going on, so they're across multiple sites. This was their first project. So it's been the, a few learning curves. So obviously, <laughs> the initial quote was a lot less than what the end actual costs were, um, but obviously that was down to materials and labour costs and delays and everything like that, so it all mounts up. With every project that we do, because of the amount that we're doing all at the same time, we've now incorporated a full-time interior design team, and what it creates then for us is different exclusive accommodation per house. We don't want the yeah. same, like, everyone to look the same, so each one has its own, like, a little twist. They've all got their own little design, and we have a staging teams and everything like that, so... We... It's very systemised. We asked along a property expert from the auction house who sold this property to get his thoughts on the changes. I think it's been thoughtfully laid out, uh, they've maximised every single nut and cranny uh, in it and finished it to an exceptionally high standard and also you've got ample parking to the rear. Sam and Trisha have spent just under £245,000, including the purchase price. Although it's split into an HMO, what would the sales figure be if selling on to an investor? Your new investors to the market, your, your landlords, they will probably be aiming for a 10% return based on its net income. So its value is probably in the region of £250,000. However, this amount could easily be higher. 
on this one, we already had it valued middle of refurb, so before it was even finished, and he said it was worth 280,000. Um, so we're really, really pleased with that, and hopefully we'll get more um, when we come to deal with that, so. Agreed, yeah, yeah. couldn't say any more. Yep. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Ask her. <laughs> At that figure of £280,000, Sam and Tricia could be looking at a pre-tax profit of around £35,000. But as they're planning on renting, what kind of monthly income could they be looking at? I think you're probably looking at in the region of £110 per room, um, per week. That will include your, your utility bills. So as an overall income, um, you're probably looking at £28,000 um, per annum, but minus your utility bills, that will bring it closer to an income of £25,000 per annum as a net income. We're not even fully finished yet. We've just got a couple more things outstanding, but we've fully let it for £2,850 per calendar month, which, which is... £34,200 per annum. Yes! So more than what we were expecting, um, but yeah. Amazing. Quality outshines again. And with that monthly figure of £2,850 per calendar month, Sam and Tricia are looking at an impressive 13.9% yield. So what are their plans now? Uh, so yes, we've got a child together and we've also got three girls with a previous relationship. Um, so literally it's trying to leave a legacy for our for the future, for the, for, the, for the kids to take over. So that's kind of pretty much why we do everything that we do. Yeah. Let's head to Grimsby now, a town long associated with the fishing industry. In the mid 20th century, trawlers were bringing in 500 tonnes of fish a day. Let's see if today's property is a good quality catch. Well, if you're looking for a great value property investment or a home to buy, you could do much worse than coming to where I've come to today, Grimsby in the north of England, where you can find something like this. It's a three bed, mid-terrace, yeah, it looks like it's in a bit of a state from the outside, but the guide price, get this, 20 to 25,000 quid. So for that kind of money, we're not expecting much. Anything is a bonus. And actually, nice uh, front living room there. And then through into the rear sitting room. Now, it's obviously all in a bit of a state, uh, but I'm thinking what you could do in here. This is obviously some kind of uh, sud partition wall. Somebody's actually already put a hole in it for you. You can see that would be very easy to take out. It's not uh, actually holding up uh, the roof, although you want to get that double check before you take it out. But I think that would be a, a very easy thing to do to create one really huge downstairs living room area here. As I said, yes, it's in a bit of a state, but frankly, I don't care. So a bit of a wiggle to get through into this room, which is obviously your kitchen. Now, <laughs> I know you're going to think, not another wall he's taken out, but really, if you got rid of this wall as well, and this is uh, a structural wall, so you need to put in some uh, RSJ, roll seal joist to support whatever is above it. But imagine that, that was all opened through to create one massive downstairs area. I would absolutely love that, because this bit is huge. I mean, OK, you're going to have to completely redo the kitchen. We accept that. But what a nice size space. And there's more, because look, through here, into this area here, there's a downstairs loo. Um, I hope there's a loo upstairs, and that's not the only one in the property, but a really useful utility space. And how much space in general have we got with this property? And that is just the downstairs. Yes, this all seems fairly amazing in terms of space. Remember, the guide price was just 20 to 25,000 pounds. Yes, you've got your work cut out, but so far there appears to be nothing here that's a deal breaker. 
So upstairs, and the first thing that hits you is the amount of space again. This sort of long landing area, uh, large bedroom in the middle there, and then joy of joys, there is a bathroom upstairs. Okay, so it's not um, in a particularly good state, but at least all your plumbing and your waste pipes and everything uh, are there. So actually putting a new one in there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, and then the third bedroom towards the back of the property. Uh, yes, it is in a bit of a state. Yes, there's mould and there's damp and, uh, yeah, you do have to sort out the central heating system. Um, but, you know, I don't care. Again, I don't care. It's a really good size and uh, I haven't seen it all yet. So front master bedroom and a really nice size, yes. A few signs of damp up there, but nothing too much to worry about. I'm sure that the roof just needs a bit of attention. And this room, big enough to perhaps build a bit of an ensuite, um, and that would just be the icing on the cake for the house, really. <sighs> it's great. Well, unfortunately, I can't get into the back garden. So while I'm up here uh, in the middle bedroom, just take a look. And it's actually not a bad size. Um, so just another bonus, one thing you do want to sort out. It's very clear to see that the rainwater goods up here are in a bit of a state. So that's going to be causing unnecessary damp to get that sorted out. But you know what? After a tour of the house, my opinion hasn't changed. It's brilliant for the money. It's time to get the thoughts of a local estate agent and find out if he thinks there's potential to add some brilliance here. Uh, the size of the bedrooms, um, there is a possibility to maybe get a fourth bedroom in. Um, it might be a diminishing return, but my gut feeling would be to keep the three bedrooms as it's a great selling point for a young family. The estate agent believes that a full renovation of the property should cost in the region of 25 to 30,000 pounds. So once all the work has been carried out, what does he think the returns could be, starting with the rental? So when the refurbishment works are complete, I would estimate um, we would be looking at around 500 to 525 pounds per calendar month uh, as, as an achievable rent. And what about the potential resale value? So for resale, when the refurbishment works are complete, I would estimate this property to be in the region of 90,000 to 95,000 pounds. So what did you expect a property with a guide price of 20 to 25,000 pounds was going to be like? I bet it wasn't as good as that. Let's see who spotted this opportunity when it went under the hammer. This lot was sold at a remote property auction with online bids only. One, two, three, and go. With a winning bid of £48,000, the property was bought by Dan. Martin met Dan outside the property on a beautiful sunny day. Dan, good to meet you. Now then, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, we are meeting outside the property for a reason, aren't we? Yes, yes. I'm in for a nice surprise, I think. Because you haven't seen it? Nope. <laughs> we bought it blind by looking through the front window, yes. <laughs> how did that come about and why? Well, we were only one next door, oh. so we thought we'd uh, take a punt on it and uh, go to the auction and see how it come out. So what are you hoping it's like inside? If it looks like the outside, we're in trouble, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you go and see it for the first time and uh, have a chat with you after you've had a look. Brilliant. Go and have a look at your house that you've bought, paid lots of money for, without seeing. Separate. Dan will be working alongside his brother, Simon. They've been renovating properties together for the last 13 years. Here's hoping this blind buy hasn't been too big a surprise for Dan. So, what do you think? I like it. No, it's really good. I'm happy with the buy. Yeah. I think it was a bargain, to be fair. And it is. I mean, it's not in a good state. I can't see anything structurally wrong. It's, no, no, I can't see any cracks anywhere, so no. I'm happy. I'm happy. So tell me what you're going to do to sort it out. Take it all back to bare brick, re-render it, plaster it, damp course where needed, rewire it, central heating, re fully re-plaster it, skirtings, doors, 
kitchen, bathroom, whatever's needed, really. Right. Refurnish it, paint it. What about the wall behind me? Are you going to take that wall out? Or? I think we will, to open it up a bit. Yeah. Because it's a bit dark in here. Yeah. So if we take that out, I think it'll flash a light through and make it nicer. I want to ask you, take that wall out as well. Yes. Because I, I yes, honestly definitely. think that would be amazing. If you open that completely up, you'd have the most amazing space down yes. here. Yes, definitely. Oh, you think about doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wicked. I love taking walls out. Oh, do you? Yeah, You're a good yeah. lad. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's one of our main features. Taking walls out, RSJ's in. No, no, it'll uh, open it up and be nice. Great, and where will you keep the kitchen? In there, in that area? I would have thought so. Yeah. Keep it in there, then it have the, like a sitting dining area. Yeah. So Maybe a breakfast bar there. or something. Or... Yeah, but if you get rid of this, obviously it'll create a lot more space. Now, that is quite a job though, isn't it? Taking out a chimney breast. No, no, lintel it off and just, just take it out. Oh, you mean just like keep what's above as long as you put in strengthening? Yeah, as long as you put your uh, brackets in, you're fine. Demolition Dan and Simon are planning to revamp all the upstairs rooms and to potentially move the family bathroom downstairs. This will create space upstairs for a fourth bedroom and smaller WC, all on a budget of £20,000. So your budget of 20 grand to do all that, well, really? Well, this is what we do. We've got a team of guys that can come in and just do it. Right. Electrics, plumbing, central heating, new kitchen, take out lots of walls, RSJs. New stud partitions, redecorate, damp proof course, 20 grand. Are you sure? There or thereabouts. <laughs> don't, don't forget the windows. <laughs> what? Oh, and the uh, windows. And the windows. Oh, you have to give me your number, honestly. Yeah. That's well, brilliant if you can do it. And what kind of time scale? We've got to do it in between jobs, so probably about four months. Right, OK. You've got a, a great um, nothing phases you attitude. Is that right? Is yeah, that what yes, you like? Just, just go with the flow. What would you do where, in your spare time? Hobbies and things? Uh, we do a lot of jet skiing, water oh, skiing, right. boxing, just fitness, biking, do loads of biking. <laughs> got to go have, a, have your free time. Well, definitely. Clear, clear your head. It can be all consuming. Well, listen, congratulations. Good luck with it. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how you get on. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Dan, not seeing the property before he bought it, but he really has looked out here. And I think he knows he's got a great little house. I love the fact he's going to do what I wanted him to do, which is take out all these walls. I can't wait to see it when it's done. And you can find out how it all turns out later in the show. Well, earlier we saw how one of our buyers got on. But what about the other two? Will their hard work pay dividends? Let's find out. Back now to Kent and Royal Tunbridge Wells and a garage lot. Or should that be a whole load of garages? 40 of them to be precise. But it wasn't just lots of potential storage units this site came with. More than that, it came with... as Jackie explained. Just over three years ago, someone had planning permission granted by the local authority to be able to knock down all of these garages and build houses. Four houses to be precise. Two three-bedroom semi-detached houses and two one-bed semi-detached bungalows. The problem is that time has now lapsed. So, whoever gets this plot of land will need to apply for planning permission once again. But, if the local authority granted it the first time, probably they'll do so again. Yes, there were high hopes that planning permission would be granted again and that the small housing development could be built. That's certainly what Say thought when he bought the lot with his business partner Mark in an online auction for £399,500. But they were hoping to go one better than the previous plan. We've, uh, we've had a look at it to try and maximise the space on it and managed to squeeze five in there. And um, we've uh, put in for uh, sort of uh, the first stage of planning, so 
a, a meeting with the council to, to see whether they might accept that. So four would hopefully become five, three three beds and two one beds. And they had a healthy budget of £700,000 and a timescale of between 12 and 18 months, depending on how they phased and financed the builds. And now, a year on, we're back. There doesn't seem to be anything different. So what's been going on, say? So here we've actually applied for planning permission and been granted planning permission for three sort of townhouses and two bungalows. Well, that's great news, but they got planning permission six months ago. Why are the garages still here? And where are the diggers and the builders? Uh, so our plan with the site was to sell it as quickly as possible, if we could. And if we weren't able to sell it uh, for the price that we thought was fair, um, we would then build it out ourselves. Um, so when we marketed it, um, we found we had an offer on the table quite quickly from a person that, that we, we knew and trusted. So we ended up selling the site to them um, and we'd like to now use the money that we've released from this site to go and do the next project. So having thought about it, Mark and Say decided to take their plans for this site in a different direction. Having not done a new build before and looking at the numbers, Mark and Say decided walking away was best. Well, they may not have put a spade in the ground, but to get this site ready to sell on, they still had some expenses. So we've spent around £5,000 on the site trying to get it to where it is at the moment um, with planning and um, we also had to pay an overage on the site um, to the previous developers that we'd bought the site from, which was £10,000. But... Other than that, everything was, uh, was profit. OK, so an overage is an agreed percentage of the increase in the value of the site as a result of planning permission being granted, and it's paid to the original seller. With the overage and planning cost of £15,000 on top of the £399,500 purchase price, that takes Mark and Say's total costs here to £414,500. So what did they sell it for, I hear you ask? Well, before we tell you that, let's ask an estate agent what he thinks of the site. I think it's got great potential. I think it's a really good site. The garages obviously aren't the prettiest of things as you see at the moment, but I think replacing them with something pretty and attractive for the area will be really beneficial. The plans are great for the site. I think the fact that there's three bedroom houses rather than a, a lot of two bedroom houses is great. The bungalows as well, a great addition with the sort of lack of bungalows in the area and the demand as well for them. And normally high demand means strong house prices. So what kind of values might you be looking at for the completed three-bed and one-bed houses? In terms of the values for three-bedroom terraced houses, I'd suggest that the outer terraces would probably achieve around the £550,000, with the inner of the three terraces achieving around £525,000. With regards to the bungalows, I'd be suggesting that you'd achieve in the region of £300,000 for each of those. And that little lot adds up to £2.225 million. 
So even with build costs and purchase price, Say and Mark could have seen a profit in excess of a million pounds. But what about going with their no build approach and selling the site on with that all important planning permission? Having looked at the plans and sort of totaled up the GDV for the, the site we're planning um, and the bill costs associated with the development, I'd be saying that the, so the value at the moment we're planning for mission would be around the 700 to 750,000 pounds. Roughly about the ballpark figure, and we, we ended up, we've completed on the site now and sold it on to, to someone else for 740,000 pounds, and we've completed on it yesterday. Uh, so we've, uh, we're now out, we've now finished the project and we're very happy with it. Yes, £740,000 does sound pretty good and it means pre-tax profit of £325,500. That's a third of the profit they could have had if they completed the build, but it's still a good sum without having to put in the hard yards. So how does Say feel about this garage lot purchase now? Uh, it's been fantastic. It's been... Um, it's been um, another great project to add to the to the portfolio of projects that I've done to date and so we will now use what we've learned and the experience we've gained from this project to to build on the next project um, and keep going and keep growing a, uh, a scalable portfolio. We now return to Grimsby and to a three-bed terrace that had a very attractive twenty to twenty-five thousand pound guide price that Martin was itching to start taking down. Somebody's actually already put a hole in it for you. You can see that would be very easy to take out to create one really huge downstairs living room area here. But really, if you got rid of this wall as well to create one massive downstairs area, I would absolutely love that because this bit is huge upstairs. And the first thing that hits you is the amount of space. How much space in general have we got with this property? One man who was willing to boldly go where no auction bidder had gone before to the tune of £48,000 was Dan. Now that he'd bought it, there was just one tiny thing he had to do first. Now, we are meeting outside the property for a reason, aren't we? Yes, yes. Because you haven't seen it? Nope. <laughs> we bought it blind by looking through the front window, yes. <laughs> Go and have a look at your house that you've bought, paid lots of money for without seeing. Dan had planned to complete the work in four months, and now we're back ten months later to see how he got on. The old crusty, rotting facade is now shiny and new, with new windows, doors and everything else to boot. The living room has had a complete makeover. I wonder if that holy wall survived, though. It did. Sorry, Martin. But it is in much better shape now. And the dining room has been given the same beauty treatment, but did the wall here make the cut? Wow, it did not, and it's far better for it. Martin was definitely on the money with this one. The open plan kitchen diner is a vast improvement to the space, and the rundown utility room is now a cracking family bathroom. The old WC now looks much more user friendly. And upstairs? The original family bathroom has been done away with to create a smaller WC and whole new bedroom. What a canny use of space, with a little extra being pinched from that back bedroom. The two larger bedrooms have also been brought up to spec and are looking fab. The back garden has had a major clean-up, with an added new fence and fresh new turf. 
Dan and his team have done a great job, but his timescale has stretched beyond the initial plan. What were the highs and lows that held him back and boosted him through this project? It's been a challenge. It's been a good challenge. Obviously, we've been down here at weekends with the kids, painting or doing whatever they want to do, helping us out. And they, 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 they just want to be here, uh, helping us, learning. It's been, it's been a fantastic uh, chance for them. But getting tradesmen to come along, obviously, they're, they're trying to help us out at the same time as do the job. So, yes, uh, it's been a bit of a minefield, really. It sounds like the family workforce saved the day. Yeah, so my wife, Danielle, she's been down stripping and sorting things out. And I've got a, a little girl called Emily. So uh, she's been helping big style. She's been really driving things. And then uh, my little boy, Charlie, and my brother's boy, Seth, well, they, they do something for about 10 minutes and then they go to something else and go to something else. But they've, they've been helping. And his little daughter, Faye, she's been uh, absolutely brilliant. And he's, he's got another daughter, Eve. She came down and started doing the glossing on the skating boards for us. Uh, and his partner, Holly, she, she, did, she painted the front of the house for us. Yeah, she got stuck in and really enjoyed that, I think she did. It's always good to have some cheap labour too. Those kids are the most expensive kids in the world. It's, uh, they charge more than tradesmen, I tell you. I hope paying for the kids to help out hasn't blown the budget. Well, to be fair, I think we've done great with the budget. We said between 20 to 25,000. I think we've just come under 25,000 uh, to complete the whole job. Apart from his wife, children, nieces and nephews, who else was behind Dan's project? So this was a joint effort from me, my brother Simon, and then we've got an investor called Nick that's over in Ibiza and obviously he couldn't come down and get his paintbrush out because he's, he's working away. So then uh, it's just left down to me and my brother and obviously the kids and the family. So we've all just got stuck in and, and got on with it. So no, it's been great. <laughs> We've invited back the estate agent from our first visit to see what he thinks of the changes. Fingers crossed it'll be good news going back to Ibiza. I think they've done a fantastic job on the refurb. Um, honestly, better than what I was expecting. Um, it's, it's a credit to the owners on the, the quality of the job they've done. The way they've changed it has certainly improved the layout of the house. I think it's more usable and versatile for a family now. Um, it's going to appeal to so many buyers. Does he think adding that fourth bedroom was a good use of space? Adding the fourth bedroom has certainly added value to the house. Um, it's created a really usable space. Uh, and not only is maybe a fourth bedroom, but potentially as an office space if you've got people working from home. What rental figures would he place on this property then? I believe this property will get anywhere in the region of 600 to 650 pounds per calendar month. And the sales figures? Taking into account the standard of finish and the reconfiguration of the property, um, couple in obviously with the, the way the housing market's been over the last 12 months, I genuinely think this property could command in the region of 130 to 135,000 pounds. A monthly income of 650 pounds would mean a very handsome rental yield of over 10%. What does Dan think about that? Yeah, we were just thinking 650 top end, so yeah, we would be very happy with that. And a sale price of £135,000 would mean a whopping pre-tax profit of £62,000. What does Dan say to that? Well, that's, uh, that's on par as well, so that's absolutely brilliant because we've just accepted an offer of £135,000 for the property. Well, congratulations to Dan and his team. That's a great result. They must be chomping at the bit to get back to the property auction. We're looking all over because obviously this one's in the hands of the solicitors now, so um, hopefully it should only a few more weeks and obviously we'll free this one and uh, hopefully get a couple more. What's been the best part of the whole experience for Dan? It's brought the family closer together, the cousins closer together, and we've just had a, we've had a laugh. So there you have it. Property developing can be a steep learning curve, even if you're a seasoned property developer. Hopefully we've been able to provide you with some valuable insight and there are plenty more lessons to learn next time. Or you could press that red button on BBC iPlayer for more Homes Under the Hammer now.
Hello, I'm Ross Kemp, host of Bridge of Lies, a brand new high stakes game show. It's a lie. Where winning is as simple as getting from A to B. <laughs> is it true? <laughs> And that starts Monday afternoon at 4.30 here on BBC One. If you didn't know...